So Raheem Sterling double and a goal then from Nicholas Jackson has given Chelsea their first Premier League win under Maurizio Pochettino, beating Luton uh, 3-0 and in pretty dominant fashion, as you can see from the full-time statistics. 67% possession, completed passes, more than double that of Luton Towns. Touches in opposition box indicates very much a similar theme. The expected goals was just over two compared to Luton's uh, barely half. Was that exactly what the doctor ordered for you, Sean? Yes, definitely. Um, we was talking about we don't know where the goals come in. The goals are going to come from. I think Owen touched on it. He said Sterling is going to be that man to get those goals in the back of the net and hopefully create chances. And that's pretty much what he did in the second half. And Jackson's runs as well were a lot better, more directed at goal, more within that width of the 18-yard box. And he also benefited off it. So you can see little pieces, I feel like, coming good for Chelsea. It's just whether they can maintain it how quickly the narrative has changed after the last game. Yeah, but they, I mean, they dominated that game. We said, you know, 75% possession, I think 74. But today they dominated the ball as well, but they, they were clinical. And to be fair, there were a lot of really good performances. Gusto was great. Colwell was great. Casado looked comfortable. Enzo always looks great. I've never seen him have a bad game. Mm. Um, and Raheem Sterling looked sharp. I'm not sure what he's doing training-wise or what he's eating, but I want to get some of it because <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, he looks explosive and sharp and his finishing is back to its best. Yeah, well, let's look at his um, key moments, shall we? I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, he's, he's playing with a real verve that's been missing for a, for a while, Sean. Um, yeah, I think I think I touched on it a bit earlier in the show. I think now that there's there's more team structure. He has people to play with. And I think like here, Gosto gives him the ball, but kind of leads him to go on it. And he goes on a little mazy run. But it's the shoulder movement, I feel, at the end that kind of allows him that space in between. Like he just chucks his shoulder a little bit and then he just goes. And the change of pace was perfect. But the finish, I think, is on his weak foot. is a fantastic and mm. clinical finish, the way he just slots it in. Look, just lets him go there. And this nice little slide guided into that bottom corner. I mean, that's a sign of a clearly confident Raheem Sterling. 100%, yeah. Short and sharp, quick movements, decisive. You know, make up your mind and get into those spaces. If they block it, make a little chop, just get a shot off. He just looked, he looked so confident, looked so sharp. When you see wide, I mean, Sean, he's been there. When you see players out wide that are a little bit tentative, you can tell. You know, they're worried about maybe losing the ball. I thought Raheem today, he looked, with the, uh, he, he looked like he didn't have any respect for any, any of the defenders in front of him. Mm. Whoever was in front of him was going to go straight at him. And I think the defenders, they looked, they looked fearful, didn't they? You used to do that to people. You know, people look at him and think, oh, not, not him again. <laughs> but you can, see, you can see Raheem is just, you know, the confidence is coming from him. Yeah, but that's what I feel like you need as an attacker. There were games where I was completely the opposite, like how Raheem was last season, where you get to that point... And you're like, all right, no, let me come back and go out. But I think now that I watch it and look back at, say, my career, I should just just go all the time. Once you get that squared up, you go. And like I said, Gusto does well because he just gives him the ball and says, look, if you have a problem, I'm here, but go and cause some problems. Whereas on the other side, say, when Mudrick plays, if Chile gives, say, Mudrick the ball, Chile bombs on straight away. Mm. So then... It just it gets effectively tighter and harder. So when your confidence is high, you feel like you can take on anybody, and that's what Raz is doing right now. I mean, around the pitch, how how key is confidence for a winger for the job that they do? I think it's massive. I think you've got to almost play with the carers. If I lose the ball eight times by getting two crosses, we can score off those two crosses. You just got to be relentless and keep going. That's I like I said, I had bad times in my career where I didn't do that. And when I look back, I always wish that I just went all the time. Like, if you've got that chance to go in this one-on-one, -on -one, you should take it as a winger because your striker's waiting for that ball to come in the box. It's hard to critique, you know, Raheem and, and Chelsea last year because everybody struggled. The whole team struggled. They had multiple managers. The football wasn't great. Even top players really struggled. And you see for Raheem now, obviously under Poch, he spoke about kind of that it's a different Chelsea. Obviously, they've been training hard. I think he's been super disciplined on and off the pitch, which is probably what Raheem wants. But you can tell, I didn't see Raheem that season that sharp. He looks so sharp. And when somebody's sharp, you mean, we mean quick and dynamic. And he looks um, explosive. And that's, that's hard to play against. Yeah, I just from, you know, kind of I wonder how much of that is down to the infamous double training sessions, Maurizio Pochettino. You know, implements because obviously it's something that he does with intensity, right? It's he wants to train with intensity and play. Yeah, because you normally play the way you train. There's only few players, I would say, that can just train badly and then go onto a football pitch and flick a switch and be like at that level. And for me, um, 
I always try to train just as hard and just like I would play the game. The same energy, the same running, same last ditch tackles. If I had to do it, I would try and bring that into the game. And and like Owen said, it, it feels like all of a sudden he's just the sharpest man. It's like Raheem of like six years ago where you mm. just can't get near him when he gets going. Well, that opening goal came after 18 minutes and Chelsea had to wait 50 more minutes to get their second. I mean, they toiled for it, but when it did arrive, it was a good slick move. It's there again, Sterling being positive, the ball breaks down, Gallagher recycles it and it goes out wide. And this is a great ball from Gusto, the way he just picks him out. And it's, it's a very good finish. Those chances ain't easy chances, but if you see it here, like again, he just drifts in, he just follows his run and he just gently guides into the space. But I don't understand from the Luton perspective how they're marking it because nobody's marking anybody effectively, but the space he holds was brilliant. I mean, one thing Chelsea do incredibly well, there's a lot of first-time passing. You saw, saw it on the first goal, everything's one the time, tempo. first time. It makes it difficult for the defenders. Luton, everybody's keen to run back to the goal, but actually one of the, either one of the defenders got to step yeah. out or one of the defensive midfield players has to cover that space. But I mean, if you look at that graphic there, Raheem today, goals, chances created, shots. I mean, he literally, he was a one-man wrecking crew out there. <laughs> he, was, yeah. Yeah. he was brilliant. Um, and how important was that second goal in calming the nerves at, at the bridge? It was, I think it was very, very important. I think there was a stage where Luton kind of started popping the ball around a little bit <clears throat> and getting, seemed like they was growing into the game. So I think that goal kind of pushed Luton back a bit and made them realise that you can't really go to Stamford Bridge just yet and be able to compare them. But I still think with Chelsea, they, they got to be able to blow teams away at Stamford Bridge, like in the first half. When they're dominating the game the way they did in the first half, they want to try and get one or two goals coming at half time and breathe a little bit and then go on and carry on because that's what your teams like your Liverpools and your Cities and even your Brightons and Newcastles are going to do that to teams. Yeah. And his positioning, I thought, was crucial. Find where he found himself in the box. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I thought all the positioning of all the Chelsea players, and that shows Pochettino, kind of the way these players are coached, the spacing was really good. You know, obviously the wide players are staying out wide, mm. getting into little 1v1s, and I just think they're... They're going to have a lot of fun. I think Stamford Bridge was, was, at times, was quite toxic last season. The atmosphere was quite difficult for them to watch. They're so used to watching them winning trophies. But today, I thought the fans were really up for it. And they got a really positive performance from, from, from everyone. Yeah. In many respects, was that the ideal outcome today? The way it was, it was done as well? Yeah, it was needed. I've been bumping into a lot of Chelsea fans lately, like just in taxis and random places. <laughs> and a lot of them have, their, they have an understanding now where they know it's a long project. They're, they're believing in what's happening with Pochettino, the young players, and letting them build into which is which is a fantastic thing for the players because now they're not getting the boos or the groans. They can actually go out and express themselves and show people what they're capable of. Well, I'm delighted to say, let's hear from Chelsea's man of the moment. He scored two goals today. Raheem Sterling joins us pitch side at the bridge. Raheem, great to see you. Many congratulations on that first league win under Pochettino. And two goals for yourself. You've picked up where you left off against... West Ham. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it was a, a good performance from the team. Um, of course, one 0 we were a bit edgy, and we just needed to, you know, get it over the line because um, we needed that first win. So it was massive. Yeah, I suppose the longer that was going to go, questions would have been asked about this new project. But you're on the score sheet again, twice today. Nicholas Jackson gets his first in the blue of Chelsea. And so many positives in terms of other individual performance. Was that the kind of, you know, the ideal outcome in many respects? Yeah, you can see um, the steps that we've, we've made under the new manager. Um, but, you know, football's a, a winning sport and we need to win. Um, last game we didn't, we didn't manage to do that, but we came out here today and gave it everything and got the, the three points we deserved. Um, Raheem, it's Sean Wright Phillips there. First of all, congratulations on your goal, man, both yeah. of them. Um, what, do you, what do you feel like's changed for you, like in comparison to the way you're playing last year, the way you played last year, to the way you're playing like these first few games? Because for me and Owen here, we're, we're, you're so sharp at the minute. You look very, very confident. Yeah, as I said, um, couldn't make up uh, whatever excuses or whatever you can. But I, I'd say on a, a personal aspect is the appliance, applying myself, uh, given you know everything. Um, to the football club, training and, you know, trying to be the, the best I can be. And I say that's the only difference from me from now to last season is, is applying myself properly. We'll have a look at your goals, actually, Raheem. Um, just, I don't know if you, you should be able to see them pitch side. Just talk us through them if you can. 
Well, this is the assist, actually, for Nick. Oh, this is your first. Yeah, as I said, I don't feel like I was... Um, I, did, I had uh, enough 1v1s in the first half, so that first one, I, I felt I just had to get at him and get into the box, and it opened up, and, you know, I kind of shifted on my left there, and... I was going to go. On, I was going to go to the byline there, but he he made the perfect angle for me to go inside and, and slot it in the far corner. That's a sign of your confidence being sky high right now, right? Yeah, hundred percent. As I said, it's just I just need to be be dynamic, be aggressive. Sean, Sean, you know about being dynamic. Um, you were <laughs> you you're one of the most dynamic wingers in the Premier League. So uh, yeah. when you're in that moment, you just want to keep doing that, getting that defenders and um, letting them know you're there. He was being very modest. He was saying exactly the same thing to us off air as well, Raheem. <laughs> uh, but look, listen, the other thing as well that's no, that we can notice is that fitness wise, you, we mentioned the word sharper. How much of that is down to the training regime under Maurizio Pochettino? I read somewhere maybe your, you know, your, your diet might have changed or you're less, doing less work in the gym compared to last season. Yeah, as I said, um, he's coming, he's, he's laying the foundation, what he expects from us, the bare minimum. Um, that's running, um, that's showing heart. If we lose the ball, try to win it back. Um, and I think we're a lot fitter as a team um, this year, most definitely, than we was last year. And I think you can see that, um, how we get up and down the, the pitch. Hi, Raheem. It's, it's Owen Hargreaves. First of all, congratulations. I know last season was, was tough. It was nice to see you guys play with such confidence. Obviously, now you're one of the older guys with a pretty, pretty young group. What's it like trying to... You, know, you remember yourself being one of the younger guys. What's it like kind of mentoring all this group of really talented young, young Chelsea players? Yeah, I think, of course, there's a lot of new faces from, you know, my first year at the club. Um, but I said, you know, the, 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 the senior players here, I think we just have to set the, set the standards in terms of what the bare minimum is, what the manager expects from us. And that's getting our head down, running um, and, and, and applying ourselves every, every single match. And it looks like you're getting a good understanding um, with Marlo Gusto down your side. Of course, he's making the most of his opportunity with, with Reese out right now. Yeah, as I said, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a position I think we're, we're really blessed in with the two fullbacks that we have because Marlo and Reese, I think they're, they're very good 1v1s and going forward. So um, it's a joy playing with him. Um, when he's inside, I'm outside. When he's outside, I'm inside. And we have a great relationship and he's assisted me on the second goal there and long may that continue. Fantastic stuff. Well done today. Good luck for the rest of the season, Raheem. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See you guys. Well done. Raheem Sterling, two-goal hero for Chelsea. Let's get more uh, reaction then from the Chelsea dressing room because it's a first win, of course, for the new Chelsea boss, Mauricio Pochettino, talking to Steve Bauer. How pleased are you with all that tonight? Really pleased. Uh, uh, full credit to the players. So happy because always it's important uh, to feel the, again the victory and the three points. Um, yes, I see him fully deserve. Very solid performance. Yes, I am very, very pleased. How difficult are these games when everyone expects you to win and win well? No, because we saw the game against Brighton. I think they they played really well, and you know, the, the, and then the result was a little bit tricky, but. Yeah, it's a team that is uh, is very strong, and they know what they need to do on the on the pitch. They know very very well their quality, and yes, it's, uh, I think the important thing that we were very solid and very um, the discipline. And when we didn't have the ball, I think we defend really well, and then of course we create chances, and I think fully deserve the, the victory. But I think um, yes, I think we match the desire and the energy that I think for me was the key, and then the quality that we have is there, and it's, it's, it's obvious that we have the quality to, to beat them. But I think if we no match, uh, that it was the key to talk a little, you know, to match the, the energy and the and the desire. In this young team, young squad you're assembling, how important is Raheem Sterling and, and how pleased were you, not just for tonight, but the performances so far and yeah, so they got the goal? No, very, 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 I think it's really important for, the, for us because I think he's a player that uh, has the experience and the, and the quality and scoring goal and assists, I think is, is, is the best thing that can, that can do to help the, the team to, to win games. And then the connection with, with Nico was perfect tonight and assist to Nico to, to score. I think, yes, when the offensive player score, I think I am very pleased. And for Nico, because I think he'd run 21 kilometres before this evening and he carried on again, his movement, his willingness. He's, he's got his first goal. Yeah, but we, we cannot be confused. It's his quality. When we signed him, I think we, we already we saw. It's, it's, it's not that we ask for him to, to run 
um, and to press without the ball. I think his, his quality in the way that he recovered the ball and then he's so fast and have the quality. It's only a matter of time. It's only the beginning of the season for him to settle on the Premier League, but he's really young, but I think the quality is amazing and be one of the greatest strikers on, on the wall. It's no doubt. Uh, I, I am telling now, yeah. you know, after three games, but I think it's, it's, uh, the quality is amazing. It's only a matter of time. He needs to work really hard to, with the feet on the, on the grass, but I think the quality is there. And just finally, you've come into a club that haven't had a lot of wins. That winning feeling, how important is it to get it early in the season and get this group up and running? Oh, yes, I saw, uh, I saw, I think, before the, the start of the game, um, the last nine or ten Result on Stratford Bridge, no one victory. Um, ah, always is, it's always is difficult. It's, it's there, the energy is there. And that is why sometimes we rush in the, in the, the last pass or we want to score um, and we want to win the game before finish, no? before 90 minutes. I think that is going to build our confidence and our trust. Um, with this solid performance, was important the three points. And now, uh, tomorrow, start to prepare the game again Wimbledon. And I think it's important now to try to recover all, all the players. We have many injuries. I think the squad is not as big like in that situation that uh, maybe we can, you know, to to, pl- to play with different players. But I think we need to recover the player for be ready for, for Wednesday. Well done tonight. Thank you very much. Pleased and always calm is Mauricio Pochettino. He never panicked even after the first two games. He didn't, no. That's just, I feel like that's a manager that believes in the squad of players that he's got and he trusts from the performances that they've had that they will get that result, that winning feeling back. And they went out there with the same mentality, possessed the game the same way. But like Owen said, they was more clinical in this game and they took some of the chances they had. And now that is the start for them to get that addiction on that feeling. Like winning as a footballer, you can't come get anything better. Yeah. He exudes that authority that's in control right now. Yeah. The thing I like him is a gentleman, first of all. He's yeah. always humble. He's always respectful, even of the opposition. Um, he's actually their biggest star. He's, you know, which is saying a lot. Normally the manager isn't the biggest mm. star. They've got a lot of good young players. I know they're building something different, kind of everybody 22 and under, all the players are signing. But he's, he's perfect. You know, think about the way he molded that Southampton group, the way he molded Tottenham into yeah. getting to a Champions League final. He's the perfect. I just hope they, they have patience with this because it's going to need time. But itching to hear him big up Nicholas Jackson. Now. Yeah. He's going to be one of the best in the world. He, he's, he looks like an incredible athlete, you know, running the channels and he, he works incredibly hard. But Poch knows, you know, at the top teams, your centre forward needs to score goals. And, you know, that from Enzo was just world class. The touch was ridiculous. All over top. They stole the assist from Raheem Sterling now. I know it took a little deflection, but that's what we want to see from Jackson, don't we, Shawnee? Just be in the spot in there. Just get in there and, and you'll get a ton of goals. you get 15 goals doing this. Well, it's, it's perfect for a winner because it's the first thing you do when that ball goes over is look in the box. And if nobody's there, you kind of have to do something incredible or you come back out and pass and go around the other side. So I think the more he's in there, the more that ball comes in straight away. Sterling just had one look and put it in that area in between the goalkeeper and defender, which is always dangerous. You can get an own goal or it just runs straight through like yeah. it did and he gets a tap in. The thing is with him, he's so quick. If he just gets on the level with the defender and the ball gets put in, he'll get there first time every time because he's just, he's so explosive. Mm. So I like to see that from young guys that they, that they run forward kind of quickly. You know, you, you use the speed that they have. Yeah, but to control that speed. But that's, that's what he was though. He's quite clever when he's running in behind, because I don't recall him being offside once in that mm, game. The amount of times point. he went in behind. If you saw some of the clips earlier, he's, he's always a yard behind him or two yards just to give himself that mm. time to stay onside. For Luton, however, successive defeats to start their um, first ever Premier League campaign. Let's get the thoughts of the head coach. Is Rob Edwards. And yes, please. Rob, commiserations. What are your overarching thoughts after that tonight? Well, first of all, I don't like losing. None of us do. Um, but there's ways to lose. Um, and when I speak about this with the players, when our fans are like that after the game and applauding us off, then we've done something right. Uh, we knew we were up against a, a really good team today and um, it was going to be very difficult for us, but I thought we were really brave. I'm really proud of the players. There's still areas that we know we've got to keep working on. We're a new team as well. We brought in 10 new players and we're going to keep getting better, but I've seen improvement in the two weeks from Brighton. Uh, we were brave tonight. We were, we were aggressive when we could be. Uh, we, we tried to go for them, um, we tried to take the ball, 
in the end, both ends of the pitch have just let us down slightly. And they were ruthless at the key moments. And uh, we weren't, so there's areas to work on. And we know those are the most important bits. It's where the action happens at both boxes. Yeah, if you look at those key moments where it has got away from you tonight, where has it gone wrong? Because like Brighton, for the good part of an hour, there's only one goal in this game. Yeah, and I thought we started the uh, first half, we are in the game where we wanted to be. Um, second half, I thought we actually started the better team. I thought there was around a 15-minute period where the game was, was, you know, we had the territory. Um, those are the times we've got to try and make something happen. We weren't able to. And then the game becomes a little bit more transitional, a few spaces open up, but it was going to go one way or the other. We were going to score, they were, they did. And at 2-0, it's very, very, very difficult for us. And um, just, their, just their detail in that final bit was better than ours tonight. Yeah, the detail and I suppose some real quality in those Chelsea finishes. Though, if you were to critique, what's your sort of defensive takeaways from tonight? Again, the similarities to... Uh, how we've conceded before, but when you, they've worked so hard, I'm not going to blame anyone. I'm certainly not going to do that now um, in front of everyone to hear, but we know there's areas we can work on, and that'll always be the case, you know, that will always be the case, but we have to make sure that we um, we do those basics for 100 minutes, so however long it takes, and these top teams, they can work us and work us, and, and it becomes difficult, but football is difficult, and especially at this level. He's remaining upbeat. Rob Edwards, head coach at Luton. And his first two games have been away from home. The first home fixtures this uh, next Friday, as it happens, against West Ham. But having seen them now, after two games, what do you make of Luton Town? I don't know what the, I don't know where they're going to get the win from, to be honest with you. I think at times you can see they do defend well as a group. They kind of stay solid. And I think, like Owen said earlier, there was times where they did try and possess and play and keep the ball, but you can keep the ball, but you have to go somewhere with it. You can't just keep it there because eventually they went long ball, Chelsea get the ball back and then they're defending again. So for me, I think it's going to be harder. I also would have said away from home was normally a problem. Back in the days it was anyway because the mm. pitches weren't up to But everyone in the Premier League, the pitches are up to scratch now. So a top team going there is still quality pitch. So that there's no home, adva home advantage for them there either. You can't fault them for effort, but quality for you, Owen? Yeah, a little bit, but that's to be expected. I mean, what, Chelsea spent a billion pounds, you know, yeah. they spent 30 million on their squad. So it's, it is going to be tough. Um, home form is going to be everything for them. You saw Nottingham Forest last season, got 30 points at home. You know, that's, that's the only way they're going to stay up. Away from home, they're going to struggle. But I, I like the manager. You know, he's quite positive, he's quite upbeat, but he's going to need to find a way to get some goals at the top of the pitch. Yeah, OK. So much for Rob Edwards and Luton Town to ponder over. That's it in terms of today's Match Day Live. Sean Owen, great to see you. As far as Chelsea are concerned, they're up and running for the new season. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. into the penalty area still going